Now let's talk about the things that you should do before you fly a drone. And the FAA refers to these things as your pre-flight operations. Now what we're talking about here is conducting an overall safety risk assessment before you fly. In other words, a little thinking in advance will help you manage risks and comply with the regulations. So before beginning a flight, you should, as the remote PIC, first assess the operating environment, inform any uh, supporting crew members about the operation and the roles, and you should inspect the aircraft to make sure that uh, is in a condition for safe operation, and you should have readily available all the required documents in the event of an on-site FAA inspection, which you're not looking forward to. So let's go into more detail. Your assessment of the operating environment would include, for instance, the local weather conditions, local airspace and many flight restrictions, the locations of persons or property on the surface, and any other ground hazards. Now to help you identify controlled airspace and temporary flight restrictions and other flight information, download the FAA's free app before you fly to your mobile phone. Other free apps will have current weather information and help you to plan and create flight logs to document your activity. We'll talk about the different kinds of controlled airspace later, but you need to know that in order to operate your drone in controlled airspace near an airport, you're required to get special authorization from the FAA. But you can't just call up the control tower at the airport to do that. The FAA has a system in place for you to get that authorization over the internet, which you can then print out. And don't forget to have the approved authorization, either electronically or on paper, with you when you fly. Now, another part of your pre-flight operations includes keeping all the people involved in the operation informed about what's going on. Various things such as the operating conditions, the emergency procedures, uh, any contingency procedures, and the roles and responsibilities of each person involved and the potential hazards. You'll also want to inspect the aircraft for equipment damage or malfunctions. You need to check that all the control links between the control station and the aircraft are working, and this includes the uplinks uh, to control the unmanned aircraft and the downlinks to transmit performance information and location information back to the control station. Now, if you find that one or more of the control surfaces are not responding correctly to inputs, you cannot just start operations. You must figure out what the problem is and get it fixed before you do so. Now, you must also check to make sure that there's sufficient power to continue control, controlled flight operation down to a normal landing. Now, some ways you can do this include following the manufacturer's power consumption table to make sure that there's enough power or using a system that detects power levels and, and alerts you when they're low. You also want to make sure that any attached object, such as a camera or other sensor, is secure and that it doesn't adversely affect flight characteristics or controllability. Now, there may be times when your FAA will want to inspect your operations. So you'll want to ensure that the registration number is readily accessible or visible. You'll also want to ensure that all other required documentation is either physically or electronically available. We're talking about such things as your pilot certificate, your remote pilot certificate, the aircraft registration, any necessary authorization waiver or exemption, or any other documentation required by regulation or uh, that's related to the operation. Also, if requested, you must make the drone available for inspection or testing, plus you must make yourself, do you have a license then? your other crew members, or anyone else involved in the operation available to the FAA.